taping Confessions of the Chronically Chill. That is Samantha. That's Tiffany. And if you see Samantha's laughing because I butchered the beginning and the other. The other I'm thing. trying not to laugh, but it really felt like when you're in school and I can't stop laughing and the teacher's like, if you don't stop, stop laughing. Oh no! Oh and no. then you can't stop laughing. I just did that for a, little, a few minutes. We should we should have a blooper reel. Maybe do it for that. I'm sure he does have a, a running one. Oh my! We gosh. should do that for um, <laughs> no the the Patreon. I'm crying. We yeah. should release some blooper reels for the Patreon. No, like which that. you can follow by the way, and of course like and follow us on all of our social medias. <laughs> that, that laugh crying face is like definitely me right now. That is so funny. Oh my god! Can I tell them what you said? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I, okay, maybe, yes. <laughs> I can't even make fun of you, though, because I can't even do the introduction. That's why you do it all the time, because I would stumble over it. But you said Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and I don't know why you think it's Chronicles. that funny. And then when you were correcting, you were like, Confessions of the Chronically Ill, and you were still <laughs> saying it wrong because you were saying ill. I'm sorry. Oh, God, that was hilarious. Oh, um, it's January 26th. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Taylor. Happy birthday, Taylor. Happy 26th birthday. On so. the 26th. So yeah, that's she, like a golden. Th I didn't know that word because you told me it's her. Right. She reminded me of that golden year birthday. So, so golden year birthday is when, like, when you were twenty three on the twenty third. That, that was a year. long I time ago. <laughs> no, I was trying to think back to mine too. Thirty one on the thirty first, and oh, thirty one's not that long ago. That was seven years ago. So yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm coming up. May will be here before you know it. I'm going to be thirty nine. Yeah, and Sean turns forty. In, yeah. On the 14th of February, he's a Valentine's Day baby. Yeah, it's crazy how many birthdays are right there in February. Like, Slim's is the 17th, and um, and actually, our brother-in-law, Dennis, uh, with two N's, <laughs> he, um, he's a 13th. I said most people spell Dennis with two N's. Right, but I was saying that because David's oh, cause, dad yeah. is D-E-N-I-S. And Dave, I think David's I saw that. David's dad, rest in peace. Dennis right, I saw that N. somewhere. Um, someone had that same spelling with the one N, and they were like a fashion designer or something. Oh. So I was like, oh, that's why <laughs> that's he did hilarious. that. That's hilarious. He's, he's very posh. So we were talking um, before we went on air about um, on YouTube, you can watch the um, linguistic yeah. people come on and talk about the different regions yeah. and the different dialects. And they said that um, the most distinctive one is in an island in North Carolina in Outer Banks. And I can't remember the name of it, but they... Ocracoke? Yes, actually, that is <laughs> it. Was it was a guess. It was a random guess. That is it. Because there's they, not, I mean, how many are there islands there? I don't know, but well, I, I don't or even, however they do they say Okokoki? they're just banks. Okokoki. Are they even Okokoki? islands? Are they considered islands? I don't know. Then there's like top top sail, but they say top sail. Top sail. <laughs> like Slim was asking me why they say um, on Jeopardy somebody answered and it was Louisville, they but say it was Louisville. they said yeah Louisville. Like they're throwing up or something. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. See, that's one of those things that I think takes more energy than to actually just say. Even if you just said Louisville, like that would make sense. Well, or, I mean, but that's the way they, they're so used to saying it that way. It would take more energy for them not to say it that way. But I don't we, know. You have, <laughs> you have what's called the general American. Yeah. Um, I've heard a lot of people tell me that I talk like I'm on TV. Right. And I definitely have absorbed from being down here for mm -hmm. almost 25 years, the um, North Carolina accent. Mm -hmm. Not as heavy, but, you know, I mean, I'm a little around. flick. It's a little <laughs> flick. But here's the thing. My friends have always been people that were from here. Yeah. So, and then Sean's from here, and my friend Stephanie's from here, and those are the people I hung out with the most, so naturally my voice kind of does that, but apparently yeah. Southerners put extra vowels in this stuff, and we were laughing because yeah. Sean's parents definitely do that. <laughs> like, well, it's just funny because that reminds me of when I first moved down here, I was very confused, you know? I mean, I was in ninth grade, and to hear someone just say the word no was, like, ridiculous. <laughs> well, how confusing. were they saying it? Nay. <laughs> like, it's like... You know, you know, or thank you. It's like, okay. You know, so it was it was hard for me to adjust. But I've had friends, a good, you know, best friends who are But from who here. do you know that has, like, a really southern... Well, that's what I was getting at is that it's weird because, like, okay, Megan and her sister grew up in the same house all their lives. In and they speak North totally Carolina. different. Yeah. yeah, they don't have southern accents. No, her sister does. Her sister does. And she doesn't. And then... Like, I know another set of sisters who are the same same way. So it's kind of, you know, it just depends, I guess, on on the person. I don't really and know. And this kind of ties in. We have a guest today, and she has an accent. Yeah. And where's her accent from? Well, from, it's from New Jersey. Okay. But I don't know exactly where, so she'll tell us that. I um, accidentally drove into New Jersey while we were in Philadelphia. Oh, <laughs> well, actually, yeah. I had Sean accidentally drive into New Jersey, and then we paid thirty dollars to get back into Philadelphia. Why did you pay thirty dollars? The toll roads are that much? No, it's because I don't know how things work, and so like, 
I was like, just go there because GPS was messing up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I was freaking out because you know how I am with like traffic and stuff. So um, <laughs> I was like, just go there. Just do the easy pass. And then we had to pay $25 extra to do the oh. easy pass. But I didn't realize, like, I don't know. Because I think you had to have cash, and we didn't have cash. And it's just so confusing over there. Like, driving yeah. in Philadelphia was the conf most confusing experience of my life as far as driving goes. Yeah. Like, I, it just made absolutely no sense. <laughs> <laughs> I um, hate when I do something like that where it, I won't even say stupid. It's like you're driving, and then you don't realize, like, oh, my God, you know, there's a toll road. And then you accidentally go through the easy pass, and you don't have the little pass. And well, and that's that was what happened. Because I think after we ended up paying all the tolls and everything, I think it would have been just as... Because tickets were like $600 for an hour flight to Philly when mm -hmm. last year they were like $230. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, I guess we're driving. But now like the tolls started coming in and we're like having to pay extra because we didn't do, do the right thing, even though like that's what GPS told us to do because GPS would say, do this, not that. And so like mm -hmm. it's kind of confusing. And I, you know, I was, conf I mean, it's very like confusing when you're not used to doing toll roads. Like we don't, we have like one toll road that no one ever takes around here. Yeah. Or people take it, but it's like I take it because then I have to pay. I have to go on. I always do it like the day before it's due or when it's due or sometimes I'll have to call and be like, can I get that late fee taken off? Because it's like a dollar something, but yeah. I'm just so, it's one and of those things. And then how much things. is the late fee? Like $30? Yeah. And I think I've paid <laughs> like uh, up to like $90 before, like years but ago. But see, that's that's what's confusing to me because you don't have to be an Easy Pass member here mm -hmm. for them to do it. But apparently like you have to sign up for it when you travel up north. Mm -hmm. So you have to like. I didn't anticipate well, here, that. Yeah, so here it's like they don't have different, like, sections to go in or different, you know, yeah, they roads. Just to, you're just your like, plate. you're going this route and your GPS will tell you this is a toll road, but it's the faster route. Yeah. And I'm always running late. And but so see, some of them, it was when not I go to option. Chapel Hill, Like, you something. had to take the toll road. Exactly. That's, that's true, Because there's an option here. Like, you yeah. don't have to take the toll road. There's another way to get yeah. there. And, in yeah. fact, I almost never need to take the toll road. But it's almost like, yeah, like when I go to Chapel Hill it's and stuff, nice, I end up on it. It's smooth sailing. Yeah, it's almost like that bill, the way that they make it look, because it is from the DMV, is one of those things that, like my registration that um, or inspection and, and all that taxes, whatever, property taxes, that I will put out of my mind until it's absolutely like the last minute because it overwhelms I, I me. Do that, yeah. It overwhelms I, fact, me. You speaking about that, what do I have? Like, what is today? The 26th? I've got four days mm -hmm. or five. To go get my car inspected. Yeah, and this so and those I, things are like I we do those every year. Earlier. Yeah, we do. They earlier. give you like a long time, like three know, months or something. And I, I do it way at the last minute. But also that toll road thing, it's like a dollar nineteen or I don't even know what the number is. A dollar fifty. I don't. Yeah, know. and then if you forget to pay it, it's so yeah. stupid. It's like. I wish they could just like tack it onto your taxes or something. Right. I think it should all be because it's all there in the system and like you know it's attached to your license plate. So. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Speaking of, I get to go get my license plate, or oh, I, they yes. said they would mail it to me, but it's on in your Raleigh. car. It's really pretty. I pulled in to see it today. Yeah. It looks really nice. Yeah, I like it a lot. I really like it. I still have the Subaru, the Sub. But um, oh, that's right, you didn't trade it in. No, and I don't know. I'm kind of getting like I don't know what to do with it because I want to keep it, but I feel like that's kind of selfish. Are you going to send it to Gambia? I think that might be. The I end, think so. End I think game. I think yeah. you need to. Yeah, I like that car. I don't know why I got it. <laughs> it was like just a. <laughs> well, I thought you traded it in because I know you paid like a lot of money to get it fixed. I said, why did you pay a lot of money to get it fixed and then trade it in? But I guess I don't well, know why I don't think you don't trade them in because you it's don't like get much I got tired value. of every. Yeah, I won't get anything for it. I get tired of every couple of months something happening to it, and I only had. It for like a little over a year and I was just like I'm really tired of putting money into it but at the same time like so it's almost like I for one not once in my life I did this before and it seemed to work as well when I had the Jeep and the Grand Am because mm -hmm. the Grand Am was paid for just like the Subaru oh, was paid the for Grand Am. yeah I was so jelly because that was a really nice car for some yeah reason. and I was supposed to give that to Taylor for her 18th birthday I remember and then that. somebody I let a friend borrow it which I'm considering doing with the Subaru which, is it the same friend no. Okay. <laughs> I'm considering doing that with the Subaru, but because I just don't like to sit, be sitting there with two cars when and some you know people have that none. Can use it. Yeah. Right. Aww. And so, you know, that's what I did with the Grand Am. And then I was doing so that. Sweet. I was like, you know, bring it back in, you know, by December because they were using it for. I, I told them that since they didn't have heat in the vehicle they were using, and it was a pregnant oh. couple and they lived in separate places and they were, you know, just struggling yeah. back and forth. So I let the female from the couple use it. Mm hmm. And, um, and not any of, you know, to her fault or anything. It's just how things happen for mm -hmm. some reason. And I, I still feel ter terrible about it because Taylor was very excited and that was going to be her first car and everything, you know. And I was teaching her how to drive. Like, it was cool. Like, we were in the Jeep when she, you know, was learning to drive, which I have funny stories from that too. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so she the girl brought it back 
uh, she was afraid to tell me, and she, you know, went through someone else and said. I think I remember this. Like the, you know, she's uh, in broken English. Um, she was like the the motor doesn't work, you know, or, or whatever. And it's just like, gosh, why do things have to happen like that? Like I don't blame her at all. Mm -hmm. I'm not mad at her at all. You know, I'm I'm glad that I was able to help her in that time, but I just was crushed, and I know Taylor was crushed. Yeah. And, you know, I just felt bad. I'm like, why do things work out like that? But then now, the way I think of things, I'm like, maybe, you know, she would have gotten into an accident in that car or something, you know, maybe that car would have been, you know, something bad, you know, would happen yeah. to her or I don't know. You I know? think things work out the way they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. Sean would laugh at me because he doesn't believe in that. But it's like every time I believe in it. like someone needs something and you end up having something they need. Mm -hmm. It's like always at the right time, mm -hmm. seems to be. Anyway, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I could be full yeah. of Bologna. As um, <laughs> my Bologna. Bologna. Have you heard that song? It's um, Weird Al. I don't think so. So let me ask you a question. Do you think Weird Al should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but people are saying he shouldn't be because he does parodies, but he actually does very talented parodies. Right. He was a big part of the 90s. Um, and 80s. What was the one? Actually, I'm... I'm Amish Paradise. I'm, yeah, I'm Crossing Wires. Right around that time, I wrote a parody of... Alanis Morissette's song "Ironic," <laughs> and I got in trouble for it because it was uh, it was terrible. I my How writing, old were you? I was in ninth. No, I'm sorry, I was at Glenwood. So what, oh my what gosh. grade was Middle I in at Glenwood? So sixth, seventh. Mm. What grade did I go through Glenwood to at Glenwood? Um, well, I went in eighth grade, so you would have probably been there in sixth. Yeah, so I went all the way through eighth grade. So sixth to eighth grade, I went through the whole. Was it fit, didn't it start in fifth though? I don't know. I, no, wait. I was in no, half I think for fifth grade, though. In Ohio, I think it was only seventh and eighth grade. No, it was sixth, definitely. It was sixth? Yeah, I was definitely there for sixth grade. That's how, that's how they do it Hillary. here, too. When I met Hillary, I was in sixth grade. Because Adams, when I went to Adams, it was only seventh grade. I eight. remember that. I think it just depended. That might have been like the old because way to do it or something. Because it was a different place. Yeah, because that was... Because it's interesting how schools are divided. Right. Like, in different places. Right. Because here, it's um, kindergarten through fifth, and then sixth through eighth is middle school, mm -hmm. and then ninth through... 12th is high school. Yeah. I wonder if that's what it's like most of the places. I don't know. How's your new year been? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I was getting boring. <laughs> oh, no. Um, my new year has been okay. How has your new year been? Pretty good. Pretty 26 good. days in. Yeah, I think I, it's funny because I start all kinds of different stuff and then I abandon it. And <laughs> But I didn't really start anything until like the second week. But Do you I make resolutions? Not necessarily. I think this year I kind of decided to um, set goals and I was listening to so set goals, which is kind of the same thing, but at least it's like, you know, just a little at a time. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm going to, you know, live a healthier lifestyle because I probably won't. And then, you know, <laughs> like, but um, I have been working out, which is great. But I was listening to my favorite murder um, this morning on the way here. And they were talking about because I was listening to their New Year episode that they um, or maybe I don't know. They're talking about it being the new year. But they said um, Georgia said things that she's going to leave behind in 2022. So oh, I was that's like, good. yeah, I think I, that's maybe better. Cause yeah. I feel like resolutions, they're, they're so like, once you break them, it's like, mm -hmm. Oh, I broke them. I messed up. Mm -hmm. But things you leave behind. So is yeah. there anything you're leaving behind in 2022? I didn't really get that far with thinking about what I would leave behind, but everything, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is always, you know, bad food. So I've done really well not eating fast food. When I work for next stage, it's very hard not to, because they'll pay, me for your lunch for my yeah. lunch and so it's like ooh, I'll get you know something I wouldn't normally get not because of the money per se but just because of like the bad food aspect of it where I'm like you know I don't have to get lunch but what I started doing which is not easy around here and I was just down the street at Stallings which is across from um, the hospital on 42 mm -hmm. I was just down there yesterday um, but when I am coming back from like Fayetteville or whatever I'll stop at like a Harris Teeter or a Publix mm -hmm. or something for the salad bar and do that yeah. for lunch or go home, you know, I go home and make a salad a lot of times too. But, um, you know, if I want to get something out when I'm out it's around hard. here, it's just fast food. I mean, Panera, there's Panera, so I'll do that sometimes. Well, I, I'm back doing keto and, um, so mm -hmm. far I've, I feel like my body just likes it better. Like I have more energy and, yeah. um, I don't feel so like bloated. Does that make sense? Yeah. We Gross. get like really, I get really weighed down and, um, but I love bread. So we just oh keep it God. out of the house. I had a bagel at like 2 a.m. and then a bagel this morning with egg. A like, bagel with some cream cheese and but why, some um, but I don't need salmon. A bit two bagels cheese. within 12 hours, like that's ridiculous. Oh, you like that smoked salmon? I do, but I put it on cucumbers with the everything bagel seasoning and um, some cream cheese. Yeah, I have that seasoning. You don't like radishes, right? You know, I think I need to retry them because I think if they're cut very thinly, yeah, 
Like, I could probably tolerate them, but I never liked them before because I feel like people were cutting them too thick mm -hmm. and biting through just a bunch of radishes, like, too I much. like that. I'll eat, like, a whole one. Just oh, like... that's so weird. <laughs> yeah. But you so... like, like, that cotton is spicy. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. sensitive to spices and things yeah. like that. Yeah, I, I've been doing a lot of vegetables and stuff, so I don't know. I'm trying to leave uh, French fries, fried... French fries in 2022. Yeah, and biscuits and... Um... French fries aren't my kryptonite. Like, I can go without French fries. I can, too, actually, but they just always come with the combo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> actually, the well, curly fries I mean. from Barbie. Like, it's never... You never get good sides, but what good sides could you get that are, like, finger-friendly, you know? Because, like, <laughs> oh, that sounded weird. That sounded so awful. <laughs> but, like, like you know, because if you're getting fast food, the idea is, like, sometimes you have to eat it in your car. Mm -hmm. Like, what could you have that's good for you that is cheap that they can make as a side right like right. salad's not really cheap so which is funny because what i do when i'm packing up the to-go orders if i'm at overtime like i will put on top the mozzarella sticks or whatever because i feel like the person who's bringing home the burgers and whatever uh -huh. is going to want something to munch on in the car, the car? because when oh. you're sitting there <laughs> when you're sitting like i know i have to have food like i cannot be in charge of going to get food unless and, there's and then snacking. something yeah. for me to snack on which is why i sucked at um DoorDash. <laughs> I never ate the food though. Well, no. Like, why would you eat somebody's food? People do that. Yeah, I, guess, I can't believe but... people do that. That's yeah, so, ew, it's weird because so I gross. see the bags now like completely like, sealed have with some stickers. Integrity. Come yeah. on. But I would get. I would be like two separate orders, please. I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, you know, and everybody raves about Arby's mozzarella sticks, but they're like so. I don't remember. They're too what? much for me. They're too much like. I don't know. I'm weird. Anya's about... picky about her um, mozzarella sticks too. Like yeah, but those ones picky. she got that one time from the trap house. Those were so awful. Yeah, well, it tasted. She's Sean like Sean liked them. But she's like they taste gonna... like dirt. <laughs> she's so funny about how things taste. Like she'll say things taste like soap or things are too spicy. Mm -hmm. She says spicy a lot, but like I'm like there's no spice and on it. And it won't be. Yeah. It won't be spicy at all. Yeah, she's she's so vanilla. <laughs> she is vanilla. <laughs> and it's funny because that candle over there says life is too short to be vanilla. <laughs> yes. And it smells. Can you smell it? I can't smell it. I have the worst sense of smell. No, I don't think so. But it might not, you know. Be so is anything new going on in the kidney world? Well, that I don't know. Um. <laughs> I really liked our last guest. Um, right. I can't believe that I haven't gotten on, like, you know, looking more into that. Their, um that supplement i don't even remember what oh it was yeah called. no i want to look into that she too. gave me the links and stuff i'll have to give them to you I'm and sean, so sean got a printout of his blood work and i meant to look on there to see if they even test for those things because i don't think they test for them like do they right you have to do a year analysis for a lot of it oh and you'll have to say like i want to have my kidneys checked or you know yeah. have these certain things checked. so they don't just check it and blood work I mean, I guess it depends. Like, I guess it depends on what you're there for. He was just doing routine. Yeah, so he goes and does a um, a yearly. Yeah, I guess they should have. I mean, I'm gonna when... I'm gonna hand you the paperwork because I don't know what I'm looking for. It just is a bunch of numbers and letters, and it makes no sense to me. Okay, because when I used to, um, because maybe his uh, BUN level will be on there, which is like the um... BUN. We talked about that last time. Yeah, now I can't even remember what it stands for. But um, so I remember when I was getting like you know, at the gynecologist when I found out they were recording the high blood and protein in my urine. So like you just, you pee in a cup, but I don't know if every pap smear visit or every, you know, gynecological visit that you have, they would do that. I don't know why they, maybe just with pap smears. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. So, um, you know, that's something that I guess, you know, when you go to the doctor, you should really talk about. Cause a lot of times we just go in there and, you know, we just, give them our blood and we're like, okay, you know, whatever. And we just wait to see. And if they, they just check for mostly call. like the most common stuff, I guess, or mm -hmm. what you might be having issues with. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like if you're doing a workup on everything. Yeah, it should be like I mean, a full like, panel. I didn't look at it. I'm going to go home and look at it though. Cause I remember thinking to myself, I need to look at that and see if I can find like the BUN or the, um, what's the other creatinine. one? Creatinine. Oh yeah. Creatinine. Oh, so took, um, peanut to the vet, our doggy with, uh, kidney <clears throat> kidney mm, failure I guess kind of well she said his creatinine no I'm saying it wrong yeah creatinine it was um kind of leveling off and it was in good range and then the other number that I can't remember she said is still kind of off but they said you know it's progressive but she thinks it might be progressing kind of slower so he should be around hopefully for a few years. We've got him on the kidney diet because he was waking me up like every hour or two hours at night while I was sleeping, waking me up to go mm -hmm. to the bathroom. So I was like, oh gosh, does he have another kidney infection or UTI? So I took him to the vet 
And I was happy to find out there was nothing wrong with him, but then also kind of like, well, is this my mm -hmm. life now? Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, well, there, you know, maybe you can get a pen and put some PP pads down for him so you can get some rest. And I was like, and I did get some diapers, but I haven't tried them yet. Right. I asked you if you tried no, them. No, I know. I'm, I don't know why I'm just scared to, but the last couple of nights have been okay. So he's not been, it might've been just like a week's worth where he was just like waking me up. Like I was mm -hmm. like, this is like having a newborn. Because, mm -hmm. like, and then I'm like, I didn't get any sleep, and then I got to get up and take the kids to school, and it was just, yeah. It, I, I was worried that he was sick, but it turns out he's perfectly fine. He's just being a buzzard. Is he still waking you up? Well, the last couple nights, no. So, um, but I had already had the appointment, so I was like, well, mm. I'll go. And, and they did say that his levels are good enough to get his teeth cleaned because they have to put him under to get his teeth cleaned because mm -hmm. he doesn't let anybody near his mouth. Because <laughs> he, he had such a bad mouth, like, bad set of teeth. They said that like when I first got him, he was probably about six or seven years old. And um, when they went to clean his teeth, they said they just pulled on one with their fingers and it came right out. Aww. So it hurt probably. Yeah, he he had like three teeth removed that day. So he's very sensitive about people getting close to his teeth. Mm -hmm. So I haven't been able to brush it. We've tried the stuff you put in his water that we can't get him to drink. And then the um, treats he can't have now because the um, he's on the kidney diet. So we just can only do the yearly cleaning. But is he Other getting doggy nice dentures? Time. I'm just doggy kidding. dentures. That would be <laughs> I just hilarious. Pictured, so much you know, do that. Those um, pictures they always have with like the dogs with the or the yeah, animals. Yeah, and then I see people like putting. I don't know where they're getting them, but like I don't know if they're just like play dentures, but they're putting them in their dogs and putting them on TikTok, and they're just sitting there with like a full set of teeth. It's hilarious. Do you want to hear how I woke up this morning? How did you wake up this morning, Samantha? Now I I'm I'm an early riser usually anyway. Um, you know it goes back and forth because you know bartender life of staying up late and sleeping in and if I don't have to get up, whatever. But um, I get up, you know, a lot of times at like seven and, you know, have to be out the door. Well, 6.37, whatever, have to be out the door by like 7.30. So on the other days now, my body is accustomed to just waking up, but most of the time I will go back to sleep, like right. no big deal. Um, and, but this morning, so <laughs> the, I didn't, I couldn't tell if it was a leaf blower or what, because a lot of times the oh, apartment. Oh, you did. I think you did text me this. Yeah, so the apartment um, maintenance people, a lot of times throughout all the different um, companies we've had own these apartments over the last few years, they will just go around with the leaf blower. And like some of the neighbors do it too, like this one lady, but That's they're just weird. blowing like trash or leaves or whatever out of the breezeways, whatever. Mm -hmm. But they decide to do it at like eight in the morning and it's yeah. really freaking annoying, yeah. which like I kind of kept thinking, okay, the people we have now don't do anything. They don't ever do anything. And so I'm like, it can't be them because it's eight and they don't ever get there till like after nine. Like, right. Most of the time, if I have to go there in the morning, I can't because they're not even there yet when I'm leaving. So it's really annoying because then by the time I get home, they're closing early or whatever. It's just so annoying. So I look out when I finally catch the guy by, you know, by our building because I keep hearing it, hearing it. And I'm just laying there. It's like 8.15. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, what are they doing? First of all, it rained all day yesterday. Yeah. What are you doing? That's kind of weird. So I look down and this guy is right by someone's window. I mean, he could definitely just like touch the window, like knock on the window. You're right by these people's window. I know they watch like their grandbaby or whatever. So I'm like, they're probably annoyed. Yeah. He's got a weed whacker and he's got his headphones in and he's literally doing circles in the mulch with the weed whacker. <laughs> what so are you weird. doing? <laughs> That's I, was so like, weird. I was like, oh my God, what are you doing? I was so mad that I was like ready to go out there and be like, excuse me, what are you doing? <laughs> like, because he did that for like 45 minutes. Like, I mean, not that same spot. Such, I was going to say, that'd be really weird. But so maybe he went around and actually whacked some weeds. I don't know. It's wet. It's all soaking wet and muddy. What yeah, are you doing? I was going to say, usually doing? they wait until it's a little bit dry. So I'm like, oh, they finally decided to do something, which this is the different. Yeah, yesterday it's the was awful. It rained all day. Right. They could have waited till at least tomorrow or later today or something. Maybe they have a tight schedule. Maybe. I'm trying to be the optimist. Right, and that's what I'm thinking, but it's like, who told you that you should go over right now when it's been raining <laughs> to go weed whack the mulch? I don't know. Someone did. I'm sure so, to weed whack the but mulch. But what are you put, doing circles with the weed whacker in the mulch? Like, I don't understand. And he's right by someone's window, so I know if that was me, I would be so mad. So, but anyway, that's how I woke up. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm very sorry that your alarm clock was on a weed whacker. No, I've had a better morning after that. I've had okay. a way better morning. Well, let's let's go ahead and get into our guest. We have a guest today. You're going to have to tell me a little bit about her. Oh, Angela Ravito. I've never actually said her last name like until today. And we're so. hoping you're not Ravito. No, it's R-O-V-I-T-O. And she's amazing. 
amazing. She's awesome. So I don't want to mess up any details of her story, mm -hmm. but I know that she had colorectal cancer. Um, colorectal is... Yeah, so this has been like all in the last few years. Um, I've known her, gosh, for about... I don't know. I want to say like 15 years probably. And she lives in the Raleigh-Durham area. Yeah, so she's in Wake Forest, as she was saying, because <laughs> that's her New Jersey accent. She's so cute. Um, yeah, Angela's a beautiful person. She is doing some work with Pips um, Foster Rescue. I'm not really sure what it's called. It's Pips, a dog P -I -P -S, yeah, for um, dogs. And I always see her with mainly pit bulls, but I don't know if it's all pit bulls. So these are questions we can ask her. Mm -hmm. um, she has just been a joy to watch on social media and talk to. I mean, one time we talked for like four hours on the phone. And so she's been real fun. I've been wanting to get her on here. And she might not necessarily have a kidney connection. Well, she does have a little kidney connection, mm -hmm. and we will ask her about that. But, um, you know, this is not necessarily having to do with dialysis or anything. I just really think, you know. So how did she, you find her if it's not? Um, I thought. No, I've known her for 15 years. Oh. I just said that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, so I've, I've known her. How did you it meet her then? For, through overtime. I mean, she. Oh, okay. She. Um, knows the Clark family. Oh, okay. And so, um, yeah, I think, um, gosh, I mean, we've just, our paths have crossed a bunch of times. She did the sweetest thing, let me tell you, because you know how I love to send people gifts without even saying anything? Yeah, you're it's really, like my like, favorite thing to do. I know. You you, you got me with the um, the little... Um, nesting eggs. The, the nesting dolls the dead, yeah. that were the de los muertos. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nesting, which is two of my favorite things, is nesting dolls. I know. When I saw that, I was like, wow. So I like to do that. And that's why, let me go ahead and just uh, put out there, when I say I don't do Christmas gifts, that's why. Because I'm not going to stress myself out, break the bank, do all this thing, first of all, for other people's kids. I don't have any kids. And then, you know, just make such a big deal about right. this one minute that I give you that present when if I see something that reminds me of you or if we're out or whatever, mm -hmm. I'm going to like show my, you know, friendship or whatever love for you in that way. So, yeah. um, nobody ever sends me anything. It's overwhelming and for you, I think. I think bit. it is very yeah. much so. So, well, I you should stress over that. Yeah. I ditched Christmas gifts like God, 15 years ago. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a while. I'm done with that. And I'm sorry to everybody who like, well, you know, no, people I, I buy think, me stuff and I I'm like, I would almost stuff. prefer it that way. Like, I think, I kind of do the same thing where I go easy on Christmas, and then mm -hmm. if I see something, yeah, you know, because I take all my nieces and nephews out all the time. Like I spend time with them during the year, whatever. But um, so no one ever sends me anything, <laughs> and I I was always, not that I am like no one ever sends me anything, but it's true, just no one ever sends me mm -hmm. anything. But I'm always sending stuff. So I asked her one time. Uh, she always puts like around Christmas time, um, OWC, OWC, and I was like, what is OWC? And she's like, old world, old world Christmas, and she collects the ornaments, and oh. her and her friends like you know give it to each other and stuff like that. Well, one day, uh, not last year, not last Christmas, but the Christmas before, I think, on my doorstep shows up a little box, and I'm like, what is this? And I open it and I see old world Christmas, so I immediately know it's her. Yeah. And it was a um, Moscow Mule ornament. Oh, isn't that oh. so cute? Like, cause you know, the, um, Moscow mule drink and the copper yeah, tin yeah, yeah. and the, the lime. Tin. And she was like, you know, you're the bartender because she's, you know, she said that I would always like, you know, serve her and listen to her sorrows. I think she, <laughs> she called it or, yeah. you know, be the therapist or whatever, however she worded it. But anyway, we should just get into it and yes, talk to her because yes. you guys have to see for yourself how awesome welcome. Angela is. Yes. Let's welcome her. <laughs> yes. Welcome Angela. Hello. Hey, so, um, this is Angela, everybody. Yes, and welcome. I did a little um, introduction to you before, but I was actually just wondering because I could. No, I'm right. You're from New Jersey. Correct. And I just didn't know what part because we were talking about your accent. Oh. <laughs> I'm from Bergen County. So I grew up uh, right by Giant Stadium. Okay, okay. That, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I think what we want to start with talking about, I know we're going to definitely go off the rails because we always do, but <laughs> um, just a little background, you know, we don't need to have you, you know, repeat all the details because I know like we've always, we always have to tell our stories, our medical background stories and, you mm -hmm. know, give a gist of it. So just a gist of what you've gone through medically in the past few years. Um, okay. So I was diagnosed with uh, stage four colorectal cancer in March of 2019. 
and um, my metastases was to my lymph nodes, liver, and lungs. Oh my goodness. And um, February 1st, it's two years. I'm actually cancer free. Yay. Yay. So I'm doing very, very well. And um, the, yeah, there's way too much, like uh, like they say um, on the OxyClean commercial, wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Your podcast isn't long enough. So the, the <laughs> is basically uh, stage four colorectal with multiple metastases, but um, right now doing quite well. And um, there's honestly, knock wood, not much to report on there. And I always say uh, I was diagnosed with stage four cancer. I never say I have it. Mm -hmm. Never say I have it and it doesn't have me and I don't have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I get that. Like that, yeah. that reminds me of... Um, people will say an autistic child. And I was always taught to say that the child has, has autism, autism so that they're owning the condition and they're right. not, you know, it's being not, defined by it. Yeah. It's not before them, but, um, right. So you went through a, quite a bit of treatment. And if you could tell us just a, a little bit about that. Okay. So I, um, once I was diagnosed, it started very, very, very quickly because the cancer was, uh, quite extensive, multiple metastases and aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, it's not genetic, it's what would be called environmental or fact of life cancer. Mm. So that's um, an interesting subject mm -hmm. in and of itself. But um, I responded very, very well to um, treatment. I had um, IV chemo for um, eight rounds and it would be like 50 hours around I would have to wear it at home mm -hmm. so I had a port in my chest mm -hmm. and then um then a surgery which was to resect the liver and then I started on oral chemo and radiation combination and then the surgery to remove the colon and the rectum and have a temporary ostomy in place mm -hmm. and then another surgery to have the ostomy reversed and then um, they did a scan after all those things. And then that's when they saw that it had metastasized uh, to my, my lungs. And mm -hmm. we had that luckily grabbed only with surgery and did not require treatment. Oh, that's so I'm very, very, very blessed with that. And then I had 29 pelvic lymph nodes taken out of my pelvis. Wow. 29. So, wow. You know, the, um, the, the side effects of all of that. That's where the, you know, I mean, I'm blessed to be alive. And that part was, it sounds crazy, but the recovery process is, that's a whole nother thing altogether. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I, I get that because it's like one thing leads to another thing and then another thing and then another thing. And, you know, you start to find that out because it's kind of like what I was just talking about with um, David, who is our producer. I was telling him, I was like, everyone, and I say this on the podcast a lot too, we've talked about it. Everyone thinks that when you get a kidney transplant, it's just, oh, everything's great. Everything's fine. You're fixed. You're, yeah. you're fine. But you have a whole new yes. set of problems. You have, right. you know, infections that you inevitably just get and, um, you know, stomach issues and things like that. And I was in the hospital a lot for the first two years. And throughout my whole transplant, I was always in a chronic state of rejection but it was like keeping those antibodies at bay and everything. Well, in doing that, that's what damaged the kidney with those medicines to um, make sure I didn't reject. It ultimately damaged the kidney to where it failed. And then after I stopped right. taking those anti-rejection medicines, then I did start to reject because I wasn't using the kidney and the medicines were doing more harm than good to you know my liver and things like that. So just the way that we're all connected, you really like your whole body, you really figure that out when you go through stuff like this. and. You know, it's funny because you're probably like me where, you know, you don't, you, people, you can't say like my problems are more than yours or whatever, but it's really funny mm -hmm. when someone takes a picture of like their saline IV and they're like, oh, pray for me. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, you know, puts it on Facebook. I'm like, if right. I took a picture every dang surgery I had, like everything and put it on right. there, like, you know, it would just, I, I can't remember the amount of surgeries I've had. I just can't. You know, this is right. like, like you're, you know, you understand this, this is your life now. Like this is how it is. And, you yeah. know, there's going to be always going to be different things that, that happen and all that. But, um, 
I think, you know, unless there's more that you want to ask her about the um, cancer, her, the cancer, the cancer. <laughs> about the cancer. The cancer. Um, yeah, just whatever you're, you're comfortable sharing with us, you know. Um, a little bit about the recovery, because you said the recovery is not easy. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah, and I and it's funny because I I and this is not just uh, you know from a colorectal cancer standpoint. This is from any any chronic illness, mm -hmm. any chronic illness. Um, after treatment, after certain drugs, after certain surgeries. Um, uh, let Let's just take the radiation, for instance. You know, radiation ramps up before it starts to come down. Mm -hmm. Then there's the whole process inside your body of, um, you know, the things that, that happen. And my focus for my targeted therapy was in the pelvis. So mm -hmm. think about it. Think mm -hmm. about a radiation uh, wave or uh, a beam. It's not just going to hit the areas. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to you know, think, okay, after this is over, um, with all the tissue damage, how, how do I go for a pap test and mm -hmm. not have issues? Mm -hmm. How do I continue to have, you know, a sexual relationship with mm -hmm. my spouse and not have issues? Mm -hmm. how, you know what I mean? It's, it's things like that because the radiation, it's in there, it's in the pelvis, you mm -hmm. know, how do I go from the fact that, you know, I, I used to be able to, you know, not pee every five minutes and now I do, you know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. everything is relative because it's all connected. connected in there. Yeah. So not trying to do an overshare, but some of these things are not discussed and it's right. So no, I went yeah. to, it, That's not yeah, really an overshare. I, would, I don't think. <laughs> no, I, I yeah. like, I, I want an overshare because that's the whole thing is like, yeah, those things that aren't talked about. And that's what I yes. end up focusing on because, you know, I went through a lot of that with like, um, there's a type of dialysis I was set up to do and it's called PD. It's peritoneal dialysis. They put a catheter in your abdomen. I'm 22 years old. You know, I have this long tube hanging out of my lower abdomen and it's like, then I go for them to start teaching me how to use it and flush it and drain it and all this stuff. They put another like six inches onto this thing and they're like, that's just how it is now. And then you got to wear this mesh net over to keep it in under your pants. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. you understand, like I was 22, I was wearing black pants to the bar, you know, trying to look cute at work. And, you right. know, I'm trying to figure out how to put this thing <laughs> in these pants without anybody knowing. And it feels like a big secret, you know, and it's like you feel like right. you're different and you have something weird about you. And yeah, the, the, it did nothing for your personal life because we talked about that right. with Yvonne. We talked about that with um, Yvonne. On our Rest second, in peace. Yeah our second episode and it's just like there's so much that people don't see and don't think about like right. they probably say oh great right. you you know you did good with the radiation yeah, you did great so life is just back to normal now yeah and it's totally yeah. not it's well, like the, the focus is on you're alive and mm -hmm, that and that's mm -hmm. true. and you're grateful that without say. Mm -hmm. but um you know it's okay you're not in treatment so you're back to normal mm -hmm. you're over the surgeries so mm -hmm. you're fine now right mm -hmm. and it's, um, you know, there's PTSD involved. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I still, I still wake up sometimes and I can't breathe. And I'm like, I don't even, re I'm like, did this really happen to me? Mm -hmm. Did this really happen? And then, you know, neuropathy, you know, mm -hmm. you get the numbness in your fingers and toes from, you know, uh, not just chemotherapy, other drugs for, again, other chronic illnesses, it's yeah. not, you know, not just out like this. It's, all types of things. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a very, very long road. And I've been very, very blessed that my team at UNC was mm -hmm. very proactive with, um, dilator programs and pelvic floor therapy, which oh, yeah, that's cool. I never even knew <laughs> about pelvic. Was that UNC Chapel Hill floor therapy? I thought that was, yeah. Know, for, hmm. So UNC yeah. Chapel Hill, same as Samantha. Samantha's mm -hmm. also through UNC Chapel yeah, Hill. Yeah, and I'm I'm treated I'm treated out of um you know uh, Rex. Yeah, right, yeah. On, and but uh, but really I'm treated over here in Wakefield. You know they have all their little like pop up cancer centers. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so I'm treated over there. But uh, you know um the 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 I I always say after all of this the focus for anything, physical therapy 
and pelvic floor therapy is so important all the way around because mm -hmm. there's muscles and tissues during mm -hmm. any surgery or any placement of objects in your body, like my port was in my chest, you know, things are disrupted. Yeah. And nerves are tapped and nerves are moved around or cut. And, you know, it the benefits of physical therapy and often and um, you know, pelvic floor therapy, it, it's un unbelievable. It, it's cool. It's made such a gigantic impact on me being able to function like mm -hmm. a whole person. Yeah, I get that. Um, I don't want to skip over or change the subject too quick, but I do want you to tell everyone what you your little your little family's I guess kidney connection is that you told me about. Just because My, you know which, this, which part? Oh, Jason, um, how he. Well, his, my, his, my husband is a yeah. kidney donor. Yeah. <gasps> Yay! I thought that was cool. Yeah, my husband and um, you know, I have to I have to make your audience laugh. My ex husband fixed me up with my current husband. So <laughs> I didn't even know that. I, I, I think he kind of figured he owed me one, so he found me a, a nice husband. But um, and, and he knew what you were like, so. <laughs> Yeah, he was per perfect yeah, person to exactly. make the match. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, and and he and he knew exactly what I needed, and uh, you know, so I'm, from you know, from Bergen County, New Jersey. So, and I'm Greek and Italian, so I'm very unhinged and nutty and high energy. <laughs> um, my husband is from Indiana, so <laughs> he loves you know tater tots and Campbell's soup. And, he's very know, meek. He's he's very yeah he's very you know. He's the so, call, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's so cool. between me and Edward, um, <laughs> Ed, Edward is Edward. her brother. <laughs> okay, I heard you. If you come in, just act normal, okay? <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, it's it, it's a great dynamic and it's a great mix. But my my ex husband, I mean, uh, hit him and his wife introduced me That's to cool. Jason. So Aww. I'm so blessed. And I, we were getting ready to uh, go out one night and he had the bathroom door cracked and it was at his apartment. And I noticed he had all kinds of scarring and stuff. So I had said to him, you know, uh, what are some of those, you know, scars? And he's, well, I had rods in my leg when I was a kid. And, mm. you know, this is where, you know, I cut my face on whatever when I fell. He's like, and this is where I donated my kidney to my dad it's and like nothing this is I was like wait 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 what yeah <laughs> I said back up <laughs> he said yeah he says, you know, my dad my dad needed a kidney and it wasn't even a discussion mm. and Aww. I was like please god please let this man propose to me <laughs> that's so sweet that is a, that's a very sweet story that's sweet I just saw um somebody shared on one of the kidney groups on Facebook the picture of like a, a dating app profile and it said um you know must be this age or whatever must have both kidneys type a or type o blood is a plus and i was like <laughs> i was like oh my god that's, that's so hilarious because that's you know something that i you know i could do but i mean i'm not in the dating scene so um yeah. <laughs> you know it would just be be funny to, to be able to do that i just now, thought that would how, be how does the scarring look for uh, um the donor. Well, so he probably did that how many years ago? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I'm with him five, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure how many before that. But um, the the scarring, I mean, he has um, his belly button is misshapen. Mm -hmm. So, like, he had a, a small scar in there and then scar around the back. It's mm -hmm. not um, it's not bad yeah, at yeah. all. So well, they say they take why them. I asked what they were. Mm -hmm. I never. I think they take I, I them laparoscopically. Under, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was under a different. That's why when I was asking him, and he was just so, yeah, you know, <laughs> blase about. Well, you know, here's where I skinned my knee on a bike, and here's where <laughs> I gave my kidney to my dad. And I'm thinking, wait, what? Because the, you know, the scarring is 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 not um is not at all what I thought. He sounds it's, pretty humble though, like to mm -hmm, have you mm -hmm. know given his kidney. Well, and it's like, oh, that's where I gave my kidney. Mm -hmm. Because most know, people are like, well, I gave that, my... You know, his nickname is Kind Jason. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, yeah, that's so kind. sweet. And, and um, 
and he always says, um, hashtag humble Jason. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that because like, that's not, Very, the, you know, the fact that you didn't even know about that. Uh -huh. No, and no. And I was like, I, he didn't tell me like, and that's what I think I really dug about him. He wasn't like, you know, trying to be yeah. like, Oh, let her, let yeah. her bring this up so I could tell the story, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know? Yeah. And that's pretty cool. Um, no, he was just, and he didn't work it in first. Right, right, right. It yeah, was it was just like a... With the leg and the chin and the <laughs> elbow and the... Yeah. Yeah, it was, you that's know, so he cool. is, he's, he's really, um, he's, he's unbelievable. But that, that um, partnership I have with him, backed up with all the support, mm -hmm. I think is why I've done so well. He seems like a good person to have around when you're having to go through what oh, you're yeah. going she, through. She had just gotten oh, yeah. sick and then they got married. That story though is a little bit um, touchy too, I think, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Touching, well, we, um, <laughs> well, we were, uh, we were only together a short time and um, it was only about a year and we had just moved in together in this. I, I, I did not feel well. I didn't feel well, but I have no, um, you know, no history of any abdominal cancer, colon cancer. Not, like I said, it was nothing genetic. Mm -hmm. um, I thought for sure I needed a colonoscopy. At that point, I was, uh, at that particular point, I was 48. But they say you got to wait till 50. Luckily, now they changed it to 45. Mm -hmm. That's going to save millions of lives. Wow. But anyway, um, you know, I, uh, I knew something was wrong. But then when I went... Um, you know, I, I found out this hor. I, I found out this horrible, horrible news. And Jason, um, he married me on a Tuesday afternoon. Oh. And um, he had said to me, you know, what are we waiting for? Because I found out I had stage four. And he says, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? I love you. Oh, I just got the chills. Yeah, and he and um. <laughs> You know, he he made me his wife. Um, I got you know wonderful health insurance. Oh and yeah. Support yeah. Network, and we were able to go ahead with all this stuff. Hmm. And it, it really worked out unbelievable. That's cool. I love this story. Yeah. I know it is cool. Yeah, and I mean honestly, I I say to him, if you want out of this. I'm, I wouldn't blame you. We mm -hmm. only know each other a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now we're going to take all this on. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, that's a lot. That's mm -hmm. a lot. And then to, you know, marry me and go through this with me and all this, you know, the bills and the this mm -hmm. and the that. Are you coming in here? <laughs> no, is that, is that Edward? Mm -hmm. It's Ed. He can say hi. <laughs> hey, Edward. Wait. Says, he says, if you can't see me, that's a real jip for the viewer, viewers. Do you want to <laughs> He's in his underwear. Edward, please. Oh, Edward. oh, oh, no. Is he not clothed? It's not that kind Ed, of show. Ed. <laughs> <laughs> so Ed, Edward, lives on your, Edward lives on your property. He lives so on my property. Oh, my God. He is a, he is a real, he is a nut. <laughs> well, oh you know, God. speaking of, of being humble, I want to, um, we do, we can't leave you without talking about, um, the main event here, the dogs. And I oh, only yes, heard one course. barking, but I didn't see any. You, you know why? Because I ran down the hall because they're acting a fool. Yeah, okay. and oh, that's why the, you, the, you got up. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know. My, you know, my brother moved down here to be my caregiver and he has rescue dogs. Oh, okay. And that's why he is in a separate building on my property because okay. you couldn't mix all these um, dogs. Mm -hmm. You know, they're all, um, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, muscular, large breeds. So we had to make sure that I could not have that. I couldn't be knocked down and I couldn't right. deal with it. <laughs> and, um, but my brother banged up his whole life to be here. And now he loves Carolina. He thinks this is the greatest place on earth. But uh -huh. initially, so, no. <laughs> yeah. So he, he stayed, but anyway, he, um, he, uh, came in the back door and the dog started to act up, but we have, um, I got involved with, um, Pips, which is a uh, perfectly imperfect pup. Oh, I love that. It is, yep. Our, That's a great our, name. Uh, mm -hmm. Our uh, goal is, you know, 
to to have all the dogs adopted out but we you know um we take on cases that are um you know uh, tender in nature just like us mm -hmm. just how we are too mm -hmm. and i think that's why i wanted to when i had heard about them i i looked it all up i'm like this this is what i have to do mm -hmm. this is my this is my thing and um how many the, dogs are you fostering is, now i'm sorry how many dogs are you fostering now well i'm only fostering one and he, and and opie was a foster fail yeah so i have, foster I fail means that she didn't give him to anyone she kept him oh a foster fail is okay as in yeah, you I you failed to foster him. you adopted, adopted. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah he was he was my foster fails so now he's mine that's my baby i'm gonna bring you in there to see them but the the, the young man that i took on last night his name is beans <laughs> oh oh that's so that's cool cute. that's and, his name beans and he is a carolina pot hound and he is oh, perfect. Plot hound. That's the he, dog. That's the national he dog. To or state dog. He's with us. <laughs> <laughs> but he's he's a lot he's a lot of fun. But you know, uh, he is seven months and Opie's two and a half. And then I have my dog, Stormy, who is uh thirteen and she is also a rescue and she's over all of this. Yeah. She's, she's, <laughs> over, she's over the dogs. But I you know, I try to do like one at a time and so yeah. we have um our, the, the owner of our, our rescue, she's, she's amazing. Her name is Nicole and she is amazing. And, you know, we, we get these, these, uh, these cases that you would think like, you know, nobody would, you know, really want to do. And, you know, my gosh, we take them and it's amazing how, uh, people are not afraid to get involved with, with, uh, dogs that need some, uh, specialized medical attention. And, and mm -hmm. it, it really, it's unbelievable. And for me, I need medic medical yeah. specialized. So you attention. have that connection already. You understand. I yeah. have that connection. And my goal um, during all this, the reason I did get involved was I wanted to do something nice for my medical team. And I didn't know what I could do for them. So when yeah. I spoke to them, I made them laugh. I said, there's nothing that I could buy for you guys because I get my explanation of benefits and I know what you all make. So I said, I'm going to do something for you that, um, that you don't have, which is time. None of them have spare time. So I couldn't think of something. And I said, you know what? I'm going to adopt a dog out for each one of the, Aww. uh, members of the team and so you donated your time for them on behalf of them correct so mm -hmm. each wow dog has that's, their name attached to it and that's I'm sweet that is from. very that is so great I, th I wish people would do that mm -hmm. more that's a great idea yeah. like we yeah. think of like paying yeah. back people as transactional like i got you some flowers mm -hmm. or a gift right. card to starbucks but mm -hmm. donating your time wow that's yeah Donate, no, and awesome. time is so precious. Like donating your time is probably one of the best things you could do. Yeah, that's yes. awesome. I and so, you know, but I've heard you say things like they, um, these dogs have helped you more than you've helped them and, yep. you know, stuff like that. And I really, I, I appreciate that. I think that's great. Yep. They have. They and I keep um, picturing when you had the one dog, I can't remember his name, but when he had to sit in the little special high chair. And oh, that video. Oh, oh. That he was, was here. He he was here. He he has a condition that's uh, called mega esophagus, and they have to be fed in a Bailey chair, mm -hmm. which is a special chair, so they can eat sitting up. And they go, you know, once they're trained, you know, they go right to the chair. They get strapped in, and they eat sitting up, and they stay there for X amount of minutes, almost like they're so adaptable. Like, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they just adapt oh, so yeah. quickly. And, and to and and the reason I share so much about this on my Facebook is because I didn't know any of this until I got involved with Pips. Mm -hmm. I want other people to say, "Hey, this is this is easy. Mm -hmm. It's different, but it's easy." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it's you know not nothing to be afraid of. Dogs with wheelchair uh, assistive devices and mm -hmm. you know like Bailey chairs and stuff. It, it's very normal. It's very yeah, normal. Yeah, and most of the time they're um, 
you know, the other senses that they have are like heightened. And so mm -hmm. yeah. they'll be like extraordinary dogs, you know, um, yes. just, just how people, you know, a lot of people who have lost a limb or a couple of limbs or whatever are doing more than, you know, mm -hmm. people with all their limbs. And so right. it's, it's kind of, it's inspirational and you don't ever think yeah. like you can be inspired by an animal, but yeah, you really can. Yes. Yeah, yes. you really can. Yeah. We're going to yes. actually have to wrap up though. Mm -hmm. So, okay. um, I don't know. Do you, do we have time for her to show us Opie and I th I think we might have like two more minutes. Okay, yeah. If we okay. we just want to see the dogs and Okay. And, and when I say run, I mean let me <laughs> move slowly through the house. Okay. And um and anybody who's watching sure needs to head in his rooms are rare. Oh, <laughs> needs oh, to go have... and look Angela up I know, on but Facebook. You don't have to be camera ready. It's over. You know, it's not like you're on an interview. Can you just say hello? <laughs> There he is. Hey, Edward. Hey. <laughs> um, That's funny. He, really, he put on a shirt. <laughs> he's he close. He likes to live camera ready. Oh, my God. I told you he's so extra. Well, I just oh, love the lives that you had on Facebook where you guys would be in the kitchen. Those were always my favorite. Here like, they are. The kitchen of disaster. Yeah, they would be cooking in the kitchen and just. But here's the boys. Come here, boys. Oh, Come on camera. oh. Okay. This is Opie. Yeah. And Everyone knew she was going to keep Opie. Everyone knew she was going to keep Opie. <laughs> Opie, say hi. Oh, say nice. hi to the kidney bean ladies. <laughs> and the other one is say beans. Hi, everybody. Beans, yeah. Beans. Yeah. Beans, welcome to and, the kidney bean. <laughs> yeah. He, he can be a beanie, Opie's too. Beans down in the hall, and I walked right past her, and she closed her eyes like, <laughs> like ignore don't. me. <laughs> I don't want to be on TV. Yeah, yeah she's over. <laughs> yes. So those are those are the boys, and now they're get being wild boys. Give mommy one minute. <laughs> yeah, they're they're acting up. But anyway, I sure appreciate you guys inviting me to be part of the kidney bean. Of yeah, course. No, yes. No, I I definitely wanted to have you on from for a while now. Yeah, and... she has been talking about it for a while. So I'm so glad that we got to do it. Yeah, and um, you know, I think if everybody you know really wants to see the fun personality of you know you and Edward, <laughs> as I was oh, describing, just the two of you. Have us on another day. Get yeah. Us, get us. Well, I was thinking, if you don't mind, because you don't worry, you won't get a flood of people because we don't get people who interact with us that much. But <laughs> we don't. If anybody <laughs> wants to see, they can. We have a lot of people that view us, but you know. Um, yeah, if you're watching, comment. And yeah, email us something. Just, I mean, just did we get we, thoughts, feedback? Yeah, please. And um, you know, you can go look Angela up on Facebook. She's you know either on our friends yes. or I'm not sure because yes. we have followers. On and the we need to put there. a um for Pips. We need to put a link to um yeah, Pips on our do that um, too. Yeah, absolutely on our uh, mm -hmm. page pages because yeah that's yeah that's a great organization. That is a great organization. If I didn't already have five thousand things I was doing to I volunteer. I was going to say <laughs> Samantha tries to get involved with everything. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, and, and I would, I would do. Or, and some people uh, be temp fosters, where they foster for the fosters when mm -hmm. they are out of town. Oh, that's so like it's not. A, it's called it's not um, when when they do it with us. Respite. That way, respite. You know? so it's like respite. Sure, they always have an option. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a very, uh, that's even something to look into. Uh, not for you. You have too much going. Like Samantha's just. Yeah. If I wasn't the on the third floor apartment, like <laughs> then I would want dogs. But um, I just feel like that's selfish. I'm not home enough. When I am home, I'm doing dialysis. Yeah. Well, I think so. it's good that you recognize you, you, you don't have the time to give, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Right. So. And Absolutely. I hate that. So one day. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure talking to you and so happy about your story. What a great story. I know. Thank Love you, that. Angela. I hate that it went by fast because we talked for four hours and we talked. <laughs> me and oh, her. my God. I know. And I kept texting you. When are we going to continue this? Yeah, yeah, we need we need to. We need to have a, a talk. Yeah. So. We'll, we'll do and, that uh, and next time next time we'll bring we'll bring edward on he'll tell you the the crazies of a caregiver he'd love to speak <laughs> on that oh yeah we're all about caregivers here aren't we yeah if ever you have a caregiver segment trust me oh yeah we we could totally do yeah, that. yeah that's what we'll do because we've done where we've had the couples who are um you know the wife is the caregiver or vice versa mm -hmm. and so yeah we could we could totally do that yeah um, we will do that yeah that'll that be fun. fun it'll be fun yeah all right thank, thank you it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Angela. We'll talk right, to God. you. Thank you so much, Angela, for joining us on the podcast today. I feel like today. that flew by. It, it just did. Flew it did by. fly by. But we have to talk about um, our socials. We have to talk about Facebook, Insta. Um, <laughs> where else are we? 
Well, we were supposed to be on TikTok. <laughs> we are supposed to be on TikTok. We, I think we have an account. Okay. But we are, um, we need, you know what, we need our, I, we need my kids to help me with that. I think we talked about that a yeah. few times. <laughs> so, um, also we're on Patreon. Make sure that you like and um, subscribe, mm -hmm. of course, to YouTube also. Our YouTube channel is probably our biggest spot. So, and just give us any type of feedback. We're always open for feedback. We like to know what you guys think, what mm -hmm. you guys might want to see. If there's anything like questions for Samantha, that would be a cool episode. Like have, a, have people ask yeah, questions Q &A. that, and, mm -hmm. um, TMI is not really be, being an issue for you, so. No, no, no. And when Angela said oversharing, I was like, no, this is like, I want to talk about this <laughs> stuff. Like, I want to be that raw and real, like, well, place I mean, where people can. You have, to, you have to talk about urine when you're talking about right. kidneys anyway, so. <laughs> right. Um, I know I when she that... was like, I pee every five minutes or what, or I peed every five minutes. You're like, I, I haven't peed in years. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I have the opposite <laughs> problem. But, you know, um. What is our, do we ever say our email address? Our email address is kidneybeanpod at gmail? I believe so. Yeah. Try that. I believe so. <laughs> it's our email address is on our um, Facebook mm -hmm, page. Mm -hmm. It's on our Instagram page. And it's probably on our YouTube page. Right. Also. Like if some listeners are old school. They don't have Instagram or whatever. Yeah. Like send us, shoot us an email. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I just feel like we don't have interaction that I thought we were going to have, <laughs> which I think at first we did, you know, with the likes and everything. I do appreciate it. Right. But, um, you know, you can always comment and stuff like for some reason when I share the podcast episodes like on Facebook mm -hmm. either in the dialysis kidney groups or on my personal page um, it's like Facebook does this thing where when you have a link especially to YouTube or something like that they don't want people to see it so they don't like it won't show up on people's feed and you could tell because you only get like one or two likes but then when I post something in the kidney groups like a picture of uh -huh. you know um, I don't know, just at the beach or, or a picture of something or just a regular status, I get a hundred likes and I'm yeah, like, yeah, so we need so to figure I out a workaround about that. Like we need to figure out a way to make that. They work. want you to pay. Oh, they want you to pay. Yeah. They want you to pay like so oh that gosh. you're a, um, you know, content creator or whatever, you know? Yeah. But it's like, I can tell that people don't see it because not to say like, oh, everyone would like it, but like, <laughs> you know, you'd think you would get at least like 10, yeah. you know, reactions or something or people commenting or whatever. I get like one, two. Well, if you are on our Facebook page and you don't want to make your question um, super Public, known yeah. in a comment, that um, you can go ahead and DM us mm -hmm. at, on Facebook Slide or on Instagram DMs. and um, ask your question yeah, yeah. there. But it's, I think we should maybe shoot for that because mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to get more interactive. So if mm -hmm. you guys have very specific questions or general questions um, yeah. for Samantha, Samantha's been through pretty much every Every oh, well, type I'm of... not like an information hub or anything. She's like, not an I information don't, hub, I'm not but she's an experience <laughs> hub because yeah. what the professionals can't tell you is the experiences right. of things. Like what we were and that's about. where I feel like yeah. you're kind of more valuable. Yeah, there. like the, hum the, human, um, the human condition. No, the hu yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> but, but the really. actual experience of it, but not really, just, yeah. I mean, you know, we've never been about like numbers and facts and stuff. We've been about like... yeah. What it's actually like to go through that yeah, for you. What they don't tell you. What they don't tell you. Yeah. Or Which, things that can help you go through it easier. Or even if you just want to get on there and say that your experience. Yeah. Tell us what mm -hmm. you're going through. Tell us how you've heard of us. Mm -hmm. um, or like topics you want us to. Yeah. I don't want to say cover because, again, we're not. We're not like, information um, based. Bias, here for the, the knowledge. <laughs> but. Um, you we're know, and I'm not saying I'm not based. knowledgeable. I just don't want somebody to be like, well, you told me. No, you know, yeah, that you did this. We don't, we don't give recommendations. Right. We just talk about how your experience was with it mm -hmm. or how, how you've dealt mm -hmm. with these things in the past. And also, too, yeah, we, we would love to hear your stories and, and right. you know. I just want to, you know, just want that interaction. Hit us up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for real, because it's like I thought, you know, I was going to have all these people, like, talking to me about it. And I kind of do have, like, you know, people on Instagram and, like, the followers and stuff. It's hard to post the episodes on Instagram. I don't think I really have that mastered yet, but... Um, I hate I hate our age because like if we were like ten years younger we would be on top of this. But well, we're I mean, so I'm good at that stuff. The ones that I do have, you right. know, I just don't. I'm not all about like videoing myself and having myself. Maybe on we should be every day doing a story every day. But I guess maybe maybe that's what I need to do is just kind of like flood your social media, you know, feeds with. With and us. then they're just going to be like, oh, I'm sick of seeing her. I don't want anybody to, to, to yeah, say but that. Those so. are the ones that I think are successful. I'm too, you're exactly right. I'm too passive about it where I'm like, you know, I, I need to, ha I need that car salesman mentality because mm. I'm very passive where it's like, you don't want to watch it? Okay, fine. No, don't watch it. That's fine. Like watch it if you want. Yeah. But don't, don't feel obligated. Don't feel obligated. 
But we no, do have... feel very obligated. <laughs> like and subscribe. Right. We have a few beanies, though, who are very loyal. So yes, thanks, we have guys. some loyal beanies. And yes. they and believe it or not, we just we just like to know that you guys are actually mm -hmm. um, enjoying what we're putting out there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, we work hard on it. And yeah. so... Um, like, we just, should we keep doing it? Yeah. <laughs> should us, we just call it quits? Tell us if we shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm, you're, I'm like... Now you're no, really inviting no, people. No. Well, that's the thing. It's like, I'm okay if you know, you get, if you don't like it and you, you know, you want to say so or whatever. I'm yeah. fine with that. Yeah, I'm fine with that We too, don't even but... get that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even get the negative feedback. <laughs> you know, like, um, well, I'd have to cuss if I said what um, dad used to say. Um, you know, he'd be like, I don't get a hello, uh, how are you, a uh, F you, you know. <laughs> and that's kind of how I feel. Like, you yeah. know, even if you're, if you hate us, tell us. <laughs> yes, that's, you're your, like, that's you're like your, your homework. <laughs> your homework is to, um, interact with us in some way and yeah. we will interact back with you mm -hmm. we, we do not <laughs> but yes no hate here we don't welcome hate mail. <laughs> we'll welcome your hate mail and your um and your um criticism so yeah. <laughs> we're, we're we're both very open to to criticism oh but well i mean i don't I know am... about that i'm not saying i'm not sensitive but i'm just saying like <laughs> i haven't seen anything i mean when we first did you know first started there were a couple mm -hmm. and surprisingly a lot a couple of them were from the uk that were yeah. trying to like Comment. So if you're watching us from the UK, hello. Mm -hmm. And then there was one, I think, South Africa or something like that. So, wow. Yeah, it's really was cool. cool. Yeah, it's so it's so awesome that you can even do that because mm -hmm. remember everything used to be so local. Right. Well, I know like people you can only in, see what was local to you. Yeah, I know people in Gambia, West Africa, are are you know I've I've sent it to them and and we had um, Binta on. Yeah. You know she probably showed her family and friends and stuff. So I show Slim's family and friends. So you know. We are pretty worldwide, guys. You know, yeah. <laughs> if that's not enough to entice you to, <laughs> to, um, to to interact with us, but I think that's about it. And yeah, um, I think so too. Happy New Year, you guys! To everybody. Have your homework. Interact with us. So like and subscribe. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll we'll on our end start actually creating maybe some more social media content. Yeah, maybe that's, that's what we need to, to do in the new our year. Our homework yeah. is to create a little bit more of that, not just the podcast. I'm a content And your creator. homework is to um, <laughs> interact with us. Let us know how we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, send, just send us a message. Let us know. Ooh, gosh. And go see um, Angela Rovito. I think you have to friend request her on Facebook. And also check out Pips. If you mm -hmm. have, yeah, if, you, if you're in the area, if you're in our area, check out Pips. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're interested, definitely check them out because yeah, there's definitely different types of options that you can do, seems like. So, um, with that, I guess we just yeah ready. Share, Share your spare. spare. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Thank Is that you. Corny? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I I think it might be a little bit. I like it. Okay. <laughs>